So we saw a few examples of um, low dimensional data sets um, that come from the real world. And uh, here is a curious question. So we have a definition of uh, dimension that is um, the that is defined by the rate of change in the number of cells versus um, the diameter or the average distance. Um, and there's nothing in this formula that says that the result has to be an integer number, right? So of course, we can just say, okay, we es are estimating it, uh, so we'll get various numbers, but the real dimension has to be integer. But maybe not. Maybe there can be something called fractional dimension, a dimension between two integers. So here's the first example. This is a mathematical example called the Koch uh, snowflake. You start with a triangle, and then you take uh, each side of the triangle and put on it uh, a little triangle of its own. Okay, here's a little triangle here, and a little triangle here, and a little triangle here. And now you take this, and each segment you put a little triangle on it of its own. So a little triangle here, and here, and here, and here, and here. So this is for two, and then this is for three. And in fact, you continue with that till infinity. So you go on and on and on to break these uh, shapes down. And now we have a curve, this curve that is the circumference of the, of the snowflake. And we can ask, what is the dimension of this uh, curve? So it is not hard to convince yourself that uh, if basically we're looking at uh, epsilon, that is like 1, 3 to the i, right? Every time that we go from I1, I0 to I1 to I2 to I3, the uh, length of these segments uh, goes down by a factor of 3. But the number of segments goes up by a factor of 3 times 4 to the I, right? Because we have here, we had 3 segments, and now we have 1, 2, 3, 4 segments, okay? So we have 3 times 4 to the I, and so then we can basically say that ni relates to 1 over epsilon, uh, like 3 times 1 over epsilon raised to the power of log 4 divided by log 3. So this is a strange thing because it is larger than 1 but smaller than 2. Okay, so it's essentially 1.26. So we can say that the, um, that the dimension of the Koch uh, snowflake uh, the circumference of the Koch snowflake is 1.26. It's actually bigger than that of a line and smaller than that of um, the two-dimensional object itself. But it is not, uh, not just one-dimensional. So to see again that these things actually happen in nature, uh, we're going to use a variety of uh, measures we talked to already about the dia max diameter and the k-means distance. Um, and we can define things in various ways. So you can say Hausdorff dimension, which is essentially the first thing we used. Uh, the VQ dimension, which is k-means, what we called k-means. If you remember the video on k-means, we talked about k-means as used for vector quantization. Then we can talk about epsilon covers. So we have a set of points such that all points are at most some distance from them. And you can use various shapes. You don't have to use just circles or squares. You can use uh, circles, uh, triangles, line segments, all kinds of things. And so to demonstrate this, I'm going to show you uh, how you can measure the dimension of the coastline of Great Britain. And that in most cases, unless they're really strange cases, all of these methods will give you essentially the same dimension. Okay, so here is the British coastline, and we're asking how many balls of radius r does it take to cover the coastline? So here is big balls, and then smaller balls, and then even smaller balls. And we're just basically relating the radius of the ball to the number of balls that you need to use. And you see, when you get to the very small scale, you sometimes need a lot of balls because things go, uh, the, the, there's a big um, kind of breakup of the, of, of the coastline. 
And so you actually need more balls than um, you would expect if it was just uh, like, the, like the side of a circle or a, a straight line. So what you measure, you get that it's 1.25. Here is another one, way to measure the same thing. We cover uh, the coast with squares. Okay, so um, here we are basically having the number of squares, and then the the size of the squares is basically the size of one um, side, and uh, we get again uh, deep equal 1.25. And finally, here is another method to do it, which is that you start at a point. Uh, along the coast, and you find the point that is um, the that is a distance that is the the is the um, the at most a distance uh, of of uh, some length, and then you have these line segments covering the coast uh, line um, throughout throughout the circle, and you make the line segments smaller and smaller, you fit the coastline closer and closer, and you look at the number of segments that you need versus their length, and again, you get that the dimension is 1.25. So 1.25 is really an intrinsic property of the coastline of Great Britain. And it's not always 1.25. Here is a study uh, that compared the Australian coast, the South African coast, the west coast of Britain, the land frontier of Portugal, uh, in terms of their dimension. And the only important thing to remember is that only the slopes are important here, right? Because we don't really care about the additive constant. So the slopes are different, and they basically, what they imply is whether um, the, the particular coastline is more broken up or less broken up. So the more uh, smooth it is, here is a circle, so it's completely flat. And uh, here is the South African coast, which is, again, completely flat. So it doesn't, it, it curves very, very regularly, rather than having fjords and so on. So another example of having um, intrinsic dimension that is uh, fractal, uh, fractional is um, when we look at plants. So here is a synthetic generation of plants using um, a fractal program. And um, what we see is that it is, seems like it's a two-dimensional thing, but in fact, um, this, it's not quite two-dimensional. It always, every piece that, that looks solid actually has a lot of holes in it. So the dimension is somewhere between one and two, okay? Here is a, a more experimental way of measuring a similar thing, taking a picture of the um, bare uh, branches of a tree, and then trying to say, okay, what's the fractal dimension, or what's the, what's the intrinsic dimension of this, of this set? Again, you can go and visit this set, site here. And the way that it is done is basically, you take the original color, you make it into just a, uh, black or white uh, pixels, and then you um, you see how many uh, squares of some size you need to cover all of the pixels that are black. And then you look at the ratio that this grows, and then you plot it, and what you get here is for different types of trees, you get a different intrinsic dimension. They're all uh, between um, 1.8 and 1.7 or so, um, but they are different. Um, it's not that you can, this is the best way to discriminate between trees, but it's definitely um, an interesting different way to get information rather than trying to uh, actually follow each branch and each intersection. Here's another um, Example of uh, fractal, this is the Nile River um, uh, from the air. And you see that the boundary of the Nile River is infinitely uh, fragmented in this way. And uh, if you go to this uh, web page on Wikipedia, you'll see many, many more examples. Here is the coast of Britain, 1.25. But you have many uh, other things, both mathematical 
Uh, here are different mathematical ones that have dimension that is between one and two. And uh, here is um, here is cauliflower, uh, so a, a real object um, that has dimension between uh, two and three. So it is it appears to be in three dimensions, but it has so many holes in it that you can't really say that it's three dimensional. And um, on the other hand, if you look at the sur at the human lungs, they are really a very very big surface uh, for collecting oxygen uh, from the air um, that is packed into, the, um, into your chest. And um, if you look at how tightly it's packed, you basically see that this is almost a three-dimensional object. It's a 2.97 uh, dimensional object. So to summarize, fractional dimensions are common in nature. And they are related to fractals. So sometimes this is called fractal uh, dimensions. I actually made this mistake a few slides ago. Um, um, but um, they, they don't have to be fractals in the mathematical sense. They just have to be structures that have somehow um, um, a behavior that is between um, single dimensional object and a two dimensional object, or a two dimensional object and a three dimensional object. OK, so um, uh, that I hope will, you found interesting. And um, in the next video, we'll talk about how you can use intrinsic dimension to track human motion. See you then.